Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of the Let's Face It podcast. This is my journey with Terence Sambo McNaughton. This episode is sponsored by Korea Concrete, uh, the UK's largest producers of concrete products um, with an array, a wide range of market sectors. Um, they're changing the way people think the whole way around the world about concrete and bringing new levels of efficiency and performance to all of their products. Hit them up at CraigConcrete.com and thank you very much for your support. Episode five, Sambo. You were actually number five in your early days yeah. uh, coming into the Antrim team. What's the crack car's life? Ah, life's good. It's getting on with it. It's a nice sunny day for a change. But a good weather comes, yeah. Number five on every other number in the team too. Maybe up and down the field trying to get me somewhere where I could perform. Uh, we'll go with Sambo, will we? I was Aye. having this with Mike a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> going with Michael, Michael, we'll go with Sambo today. Um, yeah, I'm happy enough. Sambo's probably my was probably my biggest role model, and I probably never told you this before, Sambo. Um, Don't embarrass me now. I'm not embarrassed yet, but growing up, I suppose, um, he was a big lad and stuff like that, and he was very well recognised on the pitch, and I suppose with me growing up being a big lad and stuff and and, 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 try, and trying to build a relationship or trying to compare yourself to someone, and I always try to be to be, to be be like Sambo McNaughton. Um, just the way he carries himself in every way, and I actually remember meeting him one time. It was a couple of years ago now. Down at Delray out of here there at, at in Cushion Doll and I and it was actually we were just we actually won a match for Antrim, but I got brought on and, and I, I thought I wasn't happy with my performance at all. And you actually sat with me and we we'll talked for about twenty minutes. I don't even know if you remember, we we'll talked for a way and you didn't even know I felt the way I was feeling. But I, I told you that I made a couple of mistakes and I wasn't happy and, and the way you reacted with me and it was nearly like after you finished speaking to me could conquer the whole world <laughs> and you like instill that wee bit of self-belief in me it was only talked there for 20 minutes and it made me feel so so good about myself again but is that would that be just the, the way you would approach everyday life sambo just that enthusiasm and that drive to do well yeah I try to don't uh, i don't get up in the morning and go to the mirror and start screaming i am going to have a good day or anything like that there i just i take life as it comes like there's days you're pissed off like like I you pull the curtains and the rain's out and it's grey and it's muggy. The dog needs walked. The wet gear gets on. Off you go or whatever. You no, know, like I just lead my life. I don't overthink it. Don't I? I don't take my life too serious. Like I don't. I'm not going to invent the cure for cancer. I'm not trying to or anything. I just I want to live as good a life as I can and and be happy as I can. And there's some there's some non negotiables in my life and there's some you know easy come easy go. Like you know I. Probably I've got as much praise in my life for two men and got as enough criticism for three men. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't put too much emphasis on it. I don't overthink it, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And, and the one thing I've always done, I, I treat people with respect and I sometimes, you know, maybe I'm too honest for my own good and not there. And certainly, like, I don't think I would ever make a good administrator in the GA. You know, I, was, I think I would maybe wind people up along the road and not there, but if I sat with you for 20 minutes because I care about you, I care about Antrim, and I want you to play well for my county because you, you don't hurl for a team for 18 years and get through all the things I've done and then not want them to do well. Like, I just don't get that. Like, you know, mm. I'm an Antrim man and always will be. And if you go on to one and all Ireland, I'll be front and centre of the bandwagon leading them up. Jones's road, hopefully. Class. And you mentioned you mentioned actually their respect. Um and it's a, probably a word that's thrown about an awful lot these days. Um giving it and I suppose taking it back. But you 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 weren't always given the respect sample, I suppose, growing up. Um and you did have a sort of a tough journey to to get to where you got to in terms of playing for Antrim. Just for those who haven't um heard your story or how difficult things were for you, um how bad was it growing up for you in terms of Go ahead. You can go on and explain how hard things were difficult for you. Well, as much as you're comfortable with, of course. Yeah. Well, in in hindsight, I look now and believe it or not, I'm glad it happened to me. Mm. But at the time, it wasn't. I was a very, very bad speech impediment. I grew up in an era where things were a lot different. Like teachers, as I said, I done a Lock and Gale program for TG4, and that. Brought it to a lot of people's attention, even my own kids. My daughter came into the house after watching the program, crying. She says, 
I never knew any of that there. Why did you never? Because you didn't, my generation didn't do that. We didn't talk like, like, but the one thing I'll say, I'll tell you very quickly. I went to school, couldn't communicate, never communicated. One teacher made me sleep at the back of the class for the full year and made me fold my arms and put my head down, didn't want to give homework, didn't want to. I was totally left outside and that all their teachers brought me to the front of the class going on the next couple of years, brought me to the front of the class and actually enjoyed making me trying to read, which I couldn't. I, I left school, couldn't read and write. And every time I stuttered, hit me in the back of the head with a book and the whole class laughing and out there. But... Mm, Probably why I'm sitting here today is because of the game of hurling. And when I went to the hurling field then, it was only 50 yards away from the school and I've made this thing like I needed Cushendall Hurling Club a lot more than it ever needed me because I became somebody there. I felt comfortable there. Whenever the older guys were picking team, I wasn't the guy last picked. I wasn't laughed. I got confidence out of it. And all the all the managers and the coaches cared about that I could pick and strike a ball on both sides and catch a ball and shove people out of the road. And I was always like yourself, a big fella. Mm. Like I was probably at 14 of the size I am now. Like, so, you know, I was always questioning about all over age. But, you no, know, like, but, and then probably one of the biggest things with every Monday I had to go on a special needs bus to learn and sit and, uh, hence my relationship with John McKellop, who anybody knows Hurling and Adam knows Cushendall will have heard of John. Uh, John's probably my best friend. Uh, and a Friday evening now we go down to the pub and play pool and things like that and all the locals and home and that sort of thing. And he's, I have never been in a photograph for Cushendall senior team that he wasn't in it. I don't think there is such a thing exists that even we won the Face Cup last Thursday night John's in the team, he's holding the cup, he's getting presented with the cup, he gets sportsman a year, or he gets support a year every year. Like he's a legend. Uh, and it's a relationship he has with our club. Our club has been very, very good to John, but John's been very good to our John, or John's been very good to our club. And basically that's my story. Like School was a nightmare for me. I hated every second of it. Every uh, People say school's the happiest days of your life. Well, I'm the exception there because I hated every second of it. I just couldn't communicate. I was an outsider. I felt in fear. Uh, I cried when I was young. I cried every day. My mum made me go. I got bullied at school. Uh, teachers really bullied me, like punching you in that there. But like looking back on it now, some of the things they've done to me, like no parent would accept that today. But uh, and hence, it, my mother grew up in a generation where teachers and priests were above us. They were better than us. And God forbid you'd ever go to the school to complain. Like, and did you ever did you ever question yourself, like, um, in terms of, like, I'm not good enough, or in, not even just hurling in terms of life, or I'm worthless, or did you was there everything ever anything that came into your head? Yeah, I don't I think I get that still. Yeah. I still question myself. I still, like, as a coach now, like, last night I was out with our minors and, you, like, you have to reflect on yourself. Am I doing a good enough job here? Uh, am I doing, and even, uh, like, my style of coaching, I worry about it now. Like, like when I was growing up, like, you were told at half time, like, some of the things said you in a change room was horrendous. You would never dream of saying it now or that people we grew up with was a very tough environment. Like if you used to yodel, you were class weak. Like, mm. you know, like like North Anna men went to the county didn't shower. You know, like <laughs> it's all funny things. If you you know, it's just pains were different. People were different, but but the one thing that I will say maybe you're searching for is that it taught me to be resilient. Like I didn't set goals or anything back then. I didn't know what they were and that there, but like maybe the difference in your generation, my generation, whenever we ran a race at school, everybody didn't get a medal. Yeah. You know, and, and I would question that philosophy and I understand the other side of philosophy, how to make kids feel great and that there, but sometimes you try your best and you put in so much effort and you still fail. You know, life is like, you have to be taught how to fail. Like, you have to experience failure. You're not always going to get the girl. You're not always going to get the job. Like life can be hard, and you have to 
And I don't want to use the word weak, but I think we were brought up harsher, tougher, and and unbeknownst to us, like my life made me stronger mentally. Yeah, and I suppose um, I spoke about this before, even with the cards that I was dealt. You're saying that are the cards that you were dealt with that actually does make you a stronger person. But in terms in terms of um, I suppose society now, in in terms compared to what it was like um, for you growing up, do you would you would, and you say about the medals and stuff? Would, do you actually feel sorry for kids growing up in today's society in terms of social media and the distractions and constantly comparing themselves with other people and trying to fit in? In, th- in certain groups, um, especially for uh, males and females, but even young females, like um, in terms of posting photos and trying to get likes and stuff like that. Do you, do you feel sorry for that side of, 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 of society? Um, would you have rather grew up where you grew up or or what do you think of the whole thing? Yeah, well, uh, well, I have, I have no regrets because even all the things that happened to me in primary school, how I didn't enjoy it and all that there has made me happy with my life now. Mm. But I do feel for today, like, I think, like, like I question myself as a coach now, like, you, you keep, you know, but, like, as a coach, your job is when you go on a field, you have to take every kid out of their comfort zone to improve. Mm-hmm. But how you do that, but some kids are, like, they've, like, they've been told that they go home and they're told they're the best, they're the best. And when they come last in the race that, School, they get a medal, so they feel okay, and not there. But life's not like that, and and I can only say how, I, like, I'm not educated or not there, but I know that, like, when I look at Don Nugent, I can see faults in your game that I need to tell you to work on, and I need to challenge you to come out of the comfort zone to make you a better player or to make you. And that's I'm just talking through a purely coaching point of view, but it scares me now that I could say something. Like you were able to, uh, you were able to say to me that I sat with you twenty minutes and that there. Like I met a guy this year or that there, and asked him. I went down to help out her ma, and I asked Matty Lennon to come in and help me. And he says, and he and we talked about it for a while. He said, "Come on, the only reason I'm coming in because I was on an Ulster team, and you walked up the bus and sat beside me." And spoke to me. That's the only reason I'm here to help you. And I don't ever mind doing that. I don't ever. It's it's stuck in his head. But and it's a power of doing that. Like because I walked up a bus and talked to a guy from Arma. Then thirty years later, I want him to give me a hand. And the reason he gave me a hand because I walked up the bus and sat and talked to him. Yeah. So Glass, isn't it? like that's weird. Like that's yeah. creepy. Like I didn't <laughs> mind doing it. I've no big deal. Sitting talking to you, it probably wasn't consciously done to you but I think this is a kid playing Harden I've wore that t-shirt I know it's like to have a bad game I know it's like to feel useless or feeling that there and if I could help you for 30 minutes what probably from a selfish point of view I was thinking this will help Anton fuck the whole religion like <laughs> you know like I was looking at it from a totally maybe different perspective uh, like I want my county to do well and you are now part of my county so I would have loyalty to you of obligation to help you whatever small way I can if I meet you or whatever like out there. Like, you know, but that's basically it. I don't overthink it, don't I want to help. Like I I, I make a joke of my kids and out there that I've got the secret of life. Mm-hmm. Right. And my philosophy in the secret of life in this year, and I know that people laugh at this and that there, but like like happiness to me is like hunger. You get something that you're not hungry anymore. Happiness. Hush and Doll score a goal, I'm happy. St. John's score a goal, Laura, and I'm sad. Mm. You know, if you take it that small, but to me, we're all looking peace of mind and quality of life. And to me, how you get a good quality of life, if your quality of life is going to be determined, in my opinion, by the relationships you have. That means if, if, if you have a good relationship with your wife, your marriage is all right. If you have a good relationship with your boss, your work life's all right. If the butcher thinks you're a good guy, he's going to give you a good bit of meat. If the coal man thinks you're a knobhead, you're getting a half bag of coal in the van. Like So everything in life is determined by the people you meet. If you have a good relationship with your manager, blah, blah, you know, all them things. If you think about it, everything revolves around relationships. So my advice to 
young people going up. There's big, big decisions to make. Your partner is a massive one. Like, like, like I've always believed the best thing you'll ever do for your children, pick them a good mother. You know, I always believe like, like work, like I never had a job really where I jump out of bed and excited to mm. go to work. I'm not that sort of guy. Like, you know, Monday morning, like, you know, like I would like to do other things. I would like to be a photographer. I reckon I'm very artistic. No, people say, I see photographs and think, I see that would make a great photograph. Mm. But I wouldn't know how to work a camera. But I I love music. I love the storytelling of music. I love Bruce Springsteen and them sort of guys that tell stories in their songs, what the song's about and all that sort of thing. I, you know, people find that weird. They say, no, are you for real? You know, because I'm supposed to be this thick, ignorant, cushioned, culty hurler that but they don't realise there's – a lot more to me than hurling. Mm. You know, it's not the be. I love it. It's a passion. It's been a massive part of my life and not one second would I regret or anything I've done. You know, I'm proud to be an underman. I'm proud to be cushioned all. My birth rate is not to like the other 49 teams in Antrim. <laughs> and I won't apologise for that. Like that's, I'm cushioned all. And if cushioned all is playing Lauren, I want to beat Lauren. Or if they're playing Deloy, I want to beat Deloy. And we happen to be just, I love where I live, and but that's to, I don't know, don't like. It's a long one to answer, but to ask that, I wouldn't like to be brought up in this general because I like the mindset I have, and I don't think I'd have got the mindset yeah. if I had grew up in today's life. Yeah, of actually um, representing where you come from, yeah, the people who yeah. you're representing, and that thing. Like, I don't need to be friends with St John's people. Yeah, I don't need that. Like you and Christy went down to a match. And it's lovely. Yeah. I see that. Like, I see the good side of that. But with me and, you know, Jared Cut go to a match, mm. probably not. <laughs> but I suppose there is good sides and bad sides to that. And I yeah. think, I think, the, the, I think the, the good outweighs it. Like, for those, Christy is Sambo's son, who I'd be quite friendly with. And we went to Crow Park a couple of weeks ago to watch the watch all in her semi final and have made a day of it. And I suppose Sambo's saying, from us not being from the same clubs, it's something that he wouldn't do. But I think with the relationships that you do meet with people, I suppose, and we're talking about our county, um, and I think I think it's class, and I think that's a good side to society, the way we yeah. can that work with Instagram and stuff and talk and keep in touch with each other, whereas you probably didn't have that. You probably only seen people from the city whenever you were coming to the city to play a game or something. Um, but you mentioned one thing there, uh, and you mentioned we've talked about teams and respect and stuff. And I think, um, and we we've, we've talked about it um, off the podcast about communication, and you sort of touched on it there about speaking to people about how you would speak to people um, compared to say you're coaching a team fifteen or twenty years ago to now. Yeah. Say it's a, your minor team, um, and you mentioned there about me maybe having faults in the game. Would you approach that? Differently than what you did 15, 20 years ago, you have to be careful the way you speak to people. What, how do you yeah. feel about all that? W without a shadow of a doubt, no. I find like, like I cringe when I look back when I started coaching, when I started managing teams. Like, I'm a way better coach now than I was then. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like, how do you explain? Like, I wasn't really coached, you know, people didn't put an arm around that. Everybody was treated equal. Like, oh, kids are different now and that there. And you kind of, and I know about the three different ways you you teach somebody something and not there now. But but to get, to say that uh, I worry, I, I do worry, it's one of the biggest problems I have, though. It's one of the biggest hang-ups I have now with coaching is what because because I grew up in an environment where conflict was second nature, mm. like within our own team with other teams, conflict falling out with other people, going to St John's and people shouting things at you and having a Barney or whatever. It was every weekend. I was just read it, and then we went to train. We fought among ourselves and fell out ourselves, and and school was you know conflict. But now that's different and. And like, and I look at my own children, like their upbringing is day and night compared to my upbringing. And, and I don't want to be responsible. My biggest fear is, um, I was involved with St. Enders there for a year and God forbid, a young lad in the club took his own life. And 
and it, it scares the life clean out of me. It does, it, it makes me not want to get involved. Yeah. And uh, because am I too much of a dinosaur? Like, like, like it's, there's another podcast here and this whole thing, but what I'm saying is I look at coaches now and they're entertainers. They go and they do a drill here, a drill there, a drill there, and everybody says, oh, oh, that was really intense. That was really thing. But really, if you analyze it, you've only, you've done seven different drills, but actually you practice the exact same thing in all seven different drills. Mm. Where, whereas for my coaching, I got to look at your mental weakness. Like, like, I don't know how to, because a big part of hurling is your attitude. Yep. How you oppress things. Like, like how do you explain it? Like, you won the Joe McDonough this year, mm. Freddie. But what happened then, what annoyed me, I didn't like the fact that you just went celebrating for two days. Like, uh, my mindset was I I would have threw the Joe McDonough cup in the corner and says, right, boys, we're getting Cork and Corrigan Park here. We can cause a major upset. And what would it have been for them to beat Cork? And it wouldn't have took a while lot to beat them. Mm-hmm. But if you like the fact that you school celebrating for two, and I understand it, I get it. You don't climb the top of the mountain without looking in the view. You've trained hard all year. You're entitled to go and that's not the point I'm making there. I know you're entitled. To, there's, I'm not saying I'm right, but I would have loved for your, your team to say, right, no more photographs of that cup. It's over. Throw it in the corner there. We're going to recovery session Monday. We're training Tuesday night. We're beating Cork. We're giving them a cold shower. We're not going to be this great host that everybody, all Cork's coming to Cable, will all be lovely fellas. And we'll treat them really nice and get them, uh, make them feel uncomfortable. Give them a cold shower. Give them one bulb in the middle of the room and, mm. and just, and then get wired into them. Mm. And then after the match is over, yeah, we'll go for a pint now. She's won a cup of tea, boys. Welcome to Belfast, whatever. But just that thing, don't, I think he's missed a real opportunity there. I do. My my mindset, like I never celebrated an Ulster title or nobody in my team did. Mm. We never got photographs of it because that wasn't what we were about. Like we were suspected to one Ulster. Like you were expected to win the Joe McDonald. Yeah. Like why celebrate something you expect? Would it not been brilliant to only be Cork and Corrigan? No, I agree. Yeah, no, I, 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 I just think, but that's, but that's, I'm not blaming the management because I think the management's doing a great job. Mm. That's not the point I'm making, and I understand why the manager done that. But if I had been a player or maybe involved in the manager, I would have been pushing no boys here. No, no, we're not going. We're going home here, and that cup's staying in the corner. You know that. That's maybe where my generation are different. Yeah, we didn't communicate like 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 I went to a funeral and I met you. And we actually went for a pint at eleven o'clock in the morning after the funeral, which didn't end well. But I says to you, me and you were sitting. I says, would you have celebrated Joe McDonald? He says, no, no. And he agreed with me. And and but the thing is, John, you. You can only be the person, the circumstances you've met. Like you're a certain type of guy because you've dealt with what you have, and and that's why you're actually sitting here because mm. you you wore the t-shirt. You know what they're talking about now. I can only say what I felt. Like I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. Yeah. I'm just giving another side of it. And my upbringing and my desire or my mentality would have. That's how I would have thought. And that's how, as a um, as a coach, I do fear. Don't I do? I swear. I think about it every minute of every session. Am I? And I'm a very in your face coach. Oh, yeah. Like I have been. Like you're friendly with Neil. And I'm sure Neil's told you. Like like I I every session mediocre doesn't live here. Everything has to be. Every ball matters. Every ball. If you drop a ball, I'm on your back because I've got to challenge you to be better. Like to. Touch is, is a failure. Mm. You no, know, if it's not one touch straight to hand or it's not straight down, it's a failure. It, you've got to think like that and, and you've got to make guys feel uncomfortable trying to show that they're not coming here to tick a box, keep Sambo happy. I turned up, blah, blah, box tick. We all do your five, six drills or whatever they're doing and we all go home and nobody's improved. Like, I want to send a kid home every night realizing that. Playing for Cows and Dolls and Honour is an important. This is the greatest game in the world. Treat it with respect. Um, and if you're full of bullshit, then I have to call it out. Like, yeah. And I think you said there about taking about people being comfortable. And I suppose stepping out of your comfort zone is probably one of the toughest things you can do um, to test yourself. And I suppose you've always been out of your comfort zone uh, growing up. 
Um, but it got this stage, you're 16 years of age and you're called on the Antrim Senior Hurling Team. Is that right? Yeah. How did that make you feel after all the struggle, all the heartache, all the, I suppose, the brutality of, of, of school, the way you were treated, um, being told you couldn't make it at, at times, but no one growing up, you against the wall, hitting the ball, practicing every day, and then, I suppose, was that a dream come true for you? Or did you know it was always going to happen? No, uh, no way. Like, yeah. I didn't know it was always going to happen, and it happened very quick. Like, I was always overweight, mm -hmm. always struggled with. Uh, I wasn't, like, I could fill kids from park with more skillful hurters than me. And as I say, like, like, I don't want to sound like a drama queen because it's not, but but I was never going to mount anything. Nobody thought I was going to mount anything. A hurler or in life, like, like, like I did leave school, couldn't read and write. I have never wrote a check in my life to this day. I still can't spell. I can read. I can read very well. I, I, I read a lot of books and that there, but I couldn't write you a letter. I couldn't spell Don Nugent. You know, like, and and it's not something I say that I'm proud of. Mm. It's something that I love to be able to write because I reckon I can write a song. Yeah. You know, I do. I reckon, uh, you know, uh, uh, I've got that mentality, but I can't. Uh, but it doesn't hang me up. It's it's just something I you get ways around it. I my wife does all the paperwork. I get something like, uh, I, like me and Neil went to God rest. Damon Casey in his wake and went up and the chairman of the club who I coached the club, I coached Damon, and he says, Samuel, I'd love you to write something in the you know the book, a condolence book. And my stomach goes in a knot and hard because I can't write. But so McManus would know the score, so I nod a wink and me and Neil walk into the room and Neil writes it for us. Mm. But if Neil hadn't have been there, I'd have probably you know, been embarrassed. Like, there's times in your life you're embarrassed, you know, somebody asks you, could you write down your address? You know, things. Uh, and But Hurling gave me that thing that uh, it's the only place I ever amounted to anything. It's the only place where I had a purpose. Like, I think everybody needs a purpose in life. And, like, you're probably going down a road now where your purpose in life is to make sure that the kids don't go down the road you went down yeah. or that that's your purpose. Like, Hurling... Like I don't like you have only maybe a couple of years left. It's going to move on. Like like the book when the world stops watching, yeah. there has to be life after. Like and 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 that's what you need, Don. And, uh, and credit to you for doing it. You're obviously a nice fella because like this season made of yours. I would like like well, there's probably like you'll never find assholes with nice fellas. Yeah, everybody finds their own company. You'll find and especially a barman. Like I know that, like like a barman can sense, you know, if if you've got one knob head, you can guarantee he's not on his own, <laughs> you know, or you know. Well, that's we were talking about that a couple. Of, yeah, surround yourself yeah. with people. Yeah, yeah, surround yourself with positivity. You become yeah. a positive person. People that challenge you, but the old thing, like people that challenge you, Christy thinks you. But I loved her. It was the only thing I was good at. It's the only thing I felt a purpose and out there. And like, as, as I say, I don't take myself too seriously. I've got a lot of individual awards and things like that there, deservedly or not deservedly. I didn't pick them, so it doesn't really matter. Like, people can say what they want. It doesn't affect me either way. I don't really care. Like, but I needed her and don't. I really needed it. Like, I don't know where my life would have been if I hadn't it, the game of hurling. I generally don't know. Yeah, kept your head above the water, most of the time. Yeah, it's made me like that that desire that three nights a week, four nights a week training, like running from town up and I wonder nights what bags on, just trying to sweat and you know and that goal like it was a goal obviously to make the Antrim team and things like that. You wanted to be the best. Like I wanted to want an all Ireland. I wanted that respect, like you know, and that there and you know pride in your county and the fellas you heard with and like I say. Like sports, a great thing for teaching kids. But sometimes you give it around, don't you lose? Yeah. 
you know, and and that's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. And the hindsight, it's not good that day, <laughs> you know. But it's good. It's good for your mental. It's good for your pain. And like, and you meet great people. Like the best friends I have in life are through hurling, you know. And I've met some knobheads. I've like I say, like I know, like and you're the same. You'll find there's people that. I hear don't like me. They've never had a conversation with me in their life just because they think I'm big headed or something because I'm supposed to be because I could give them an all star or something. I didn't pick the all star. I didn't like, I could tell I you think people, people better always me. think that about people, yeah. Sambo, who do, especially people who do well. Yeah. And um, people at their first chance, they'll try and put people back down a wee bit. But you mentioned they're all the hard work and they're running in, in the winter and, yeah. and, 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 and all the, the efforts you put in. I suppose. I know what you're saying about the weight thing and stuff because I'm the same. I find mm. it very hard, especially when not drinking. I do tend to, whenever people go on the beer, I tend to hit the pizza shop. Mm. But that's just my way of dealing with things. Um, so I do understand, and I do understand that it does take a lot of work to get onto that random team um, and to stay on it. And I suppose all through the years, doing that work got you the beating off Lionel in semi-final and going to, in 1989 and going and playing against Tipperary in an All-Ireland Hurling final, which I've watched videos of. I watched videos growing up um, of you and the rest of the lads and it just, you did inspire a generation. Um, you inspired, you're probably still inspiring people um, because you are probably a part of, you were a part of the most successful team I was probably ever had in Hurling. Um, how was 1989? I've seen the All Ireland final was the best and the worst day of my life. Like mm. you know, or that's maybe a bit dramatic, but it it was like you know, like eighty nine. Like, like the one thing with that group of players, they were very strong mentally, very tough individuals. Like we, I don't think Nelson had to worry about you know mental toughness in that team. We were generally that sort of people anyway in life. And eighty nine was it was great to get to an All Ireland final. You know, disaster the way it was. Like we didn't do ourselves justice. I still believe ninety one was our best performance. Even eighty eight, were uh, in the dock where Kilkenny beat us at a point, I think, or two points. Harry Ryan got a couple of goals in the last minute. Eighty eight, that Tipperary team that beat us by eighteen points only beat us by four or five. I think. Like we played very well that day. It's just once we the day we lost all our final. I've said this a thousand times. And the day we lost all Ireland was the day we won the semi final because mm-hmm. we hadn't left Grove Park and we heard the words, It's great just to be there, it'll be great just to play an all Ireland final. And subconsciously looking back on it, we were happy just to get there. We were carried away. Like you can imagine, you imagine doing if that other team got the Lauren final, what would we all be at? There'd be flags, it'd be proud. Like we were meeting the bishop, we were doing this. There was TV cameras coming to work. I was getting days off work and nobody saying a word about it uh, to do things and that there. And it was, we were naive because there was we had no experience of it before. Like the 43 All Ireland team, I met Wally Bob from Glenarv played in that. They went the week before the final during the war. And they stayed in a bed and breakfast in Belfast and all they got to eat was brown bread and eggs. Where the Belfast men went to work, they had to sit in a and b all day and then they trained five nights a week and run the clean out of them. And by the time they got to the final, they couldn't put one leg by the other. So that's the experience that we could relate to. Yeah. You know, that that wasn't reality. Yeah, like, you know, that was saying, yeah. and, and even now, like, we were carried away. But, you know, and, and, but the one thing, like, we loved it. Like we had a perfect storm with a great manager, a great setup, great, great mentors and selectors and all that. Everything was good, and we had 20, 25 fellas that were all on the same page, all on the same M sheet. We weren't all buddy buddies. Like we weren't that type of people. Like you know, there's a handful of them I'm very close. You know, Pappy. Pappy means very friends. Me and Woody. People that got there too. You know, like we've all been very close and. And that there, and, and that's just life. There's people I haven't seen that much of anymore, and it's sad that they don't like Big Rogi. I haven't seen or heard of Big Rogi in years. Like, he's totally, I think he's emigrated to Donegal and built a wall around the house or something. He doesn't come out, I don't know. There's things like that, but 
I would have loved you to have the same experience. I would love, I, uh, funny, I was walking down John's Road on Saturday and all the Clare people come down. I said, I love to be here on them. I mean, I've never experienced that. Thing. I'd love to be. I'd love to be going down to all the sit and stand and give off of it with you. Mm. You know, you know, saying, uh, we just don't need you to fucking do something. You know, <laughs> something, you know, you know, you know, Neil McManus, get your finger out. You know, <laughs> just be, just be a real supporter. Like, yeah, I, I never got dish. that. Like, <laughs> like, all the other people that didn't hurt in that 19 got to experience that. Yeah. That's the one thing that people don't realize that that team didn't get the experience mm. going to Grove Park to watch on them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I have loved that experience. You know, imagine we had beers in the pub before and all that saffron there and picking teams and giving off about managers and, yeah. you know, and he shouldn't be starting or he should be starting and just the usual banter. Like, you know, we never got that. And I would love that. I would love that before. God takes me out of earth, like, you know. Can you see it happening? Yeah, I can. I think you have a good setup there. I, I, from an Andrew point of view, I think you need to, the one thing I'll say is, uh, back to that, the mentality, I think, needs to change a bit. Mm. I don't think you, I think you need to look beyond the Joe McDonough. I think you need, like, you need to beat Cork and Corrigan Park. Mm. I think you need to start thinking like that. I, I think he's, like, when, like I think with a perfect year this year, all but the court game, I the the most important thing for me was to stay in that and in, in the, that leave to get exposed to that more often to get exposed to that level. A couple more defenders, I think, will be there. There might be coming. I can look at uh, I'm involved with our minor team this year, as you know, and so I've been watching other teams' minors, and there's good young fellas coming again and. I think within the next year or two, there's another couple coming that could change the Anthem team. Like, it, like people don't realise that one or two players changes the whole team. Mm. You know, if you take your two worst players on and the two better players on, that changes that team very quick. Oh, then, I mean. And 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 if he's had a big cork, see he's had a big cork. Imagine next year going in now the league, beating mm. putting. Imagine Anthem mm. putting cork out of the Ireland. Mm. Let's just deal with that statement there. Mm. Like at half time, you should run six, seven points up. Don Nugent gets in the end of a ball, flicks one of the back of net. Then mm. it's game cork panic. We even beat Don. It, it wouldn't have took, you know, like it wouldn't have took this massive effort to beat Cork and Cork and Park that day. Mm. Like the first half, we were a better team. And I suppose you said there about being exposed to that level. I'll be totally honest with you, and it, it probably does take a wee bit to actually say this. Like I was sitting in the stand before I even I realised. Sambo, to be honest with you, I probably could took off what fifteen minutes into the second half, right. and the game just fucking bypassed me like that. And I do regret that because I had the same opinion of you after we won the McDonald Gleeson. And actually, came to me on Monday, the Monday night and said, "Is everything okay with you?" And I says, "I why?" He's like, "Just don't look too." And I was like, "I'll be happier when we beat Cork." Yeah, and that was what I said to him. So I sort of wanted it so much. I started and, and and it just bypassed me. And do you think sort of being exposed to that level next year in the championship, I may be able to? Yeah. Like, is that a thing firstly just for people because I know it does happen to a lot of people out there And what do you mean it's in a terms thing? of just um, just letting the games bypass them yeah. they're putting in so much into something and then well, not getting the rewards from it well I can't answer this question yeah. but I can ask the question after you use one the Joe McDonough we use Augusta in 89 in the semi-final happy just season over we'll fulfil a game of Cork we'll go on the piss for the next two days or have a bit of crack we'll get our photographs and everybody pat us in the back for great fellas like at the start of the year I expected used to one Joe McDonough mm. so like like I never got praise for one that lost their title for beating them down mm. teams like down always say oh we beat Antrim and they celebrated not there like you go back and look at the footage Antrim team never celebrated one in Ulster mm. never we never because we never got praised for it. I didn't go back to Couch and Doll and people popping about, oh, you be, they'll say, right, now's the game you need to win here. Now's the game. Like, that's where I think you need to go to now. I think you need to change your mindset. I think, like, and the other thing that, from a supporter's mm. point of view now, I, and I say this because I am, I class myself a genuine underman. I question the, 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 the What's the word I'm looking like? Too many office in my leg, and like the what's the word I'm looking? My mind's gone blank. Like so and so holds well this day, 
and the rest are bad. Mm. And then the next day they play well. The, rest bad. the consistency uh. of certain players, mm-hmm. you need to start turning up. Mm-hmm. Like not not five out of ten. You need to start turning up six, seven, eight days out of ten, mm. and get that there and get everybody together. So. Like the Clarkies, the Jameses, the Keelans, the Shans, you know, they need to start turning up every day mm. to make like they're exciting. N- nobody's questioning the hurling, but you need to start doing that Sunday in, Sunday out, mm. Sunday in, like Sunday. And the backs need to start getting tighter. And like, like whenever Horgan came on, the first point he got, there was three men, Morgan, mm. and three of them were behind him. You know, it's them wee things that ex- when you get exposed to that level at a consistent base and you realise, no, here, one of us needs to go in front yeah. there. You know, and our somebody needs to take charge and that leadership and that there. The likes of maybe an iron graph and the experience of that there. People need to start communicating better. I don't know if it's happening. And I'm this is nothing against the, I know Johnny and them are doing a great job coaching up. I'm just saying like like I've always had a problem with the way Ulster promote her, mm. like, like we all sit in there and everyone says, ah, the Ulster teams needs to expose to that higher level, mm. at senior level. Why don't we not just start it at under 14 level then and get them exposed earlier? So when you get the senior, you're exposed to it. Yeah. Like, like I think we're doing this all arts of the face. Back the front. Really. Like, you know, it's a bit like our, like our, what's the great line? Our, our success or our life will be laughed at our children. Expose your kids to this level early on. Get them down playing the, the development squads at a higher level so they're used to playing the Corks at Tipperary's and their games at that level going through. And it's another podcast I got there. I think Belfast, I don't think Gilfast has worked. You know my opinion on that. I don't think it has worked. I think, uh, I don't see Belfast hurting getting better. I don't. I, I don't see it and I don't see it at minor level not there I know there's good people in there I know there's good people working but like I went into bumpers one day you know beside the fans yeah. the three guys sitting along the thing they're all giving me you no know, culture you know mm-hmm. sheep were brought up and everything else mm-hmm. and the slagging was good and not there and, and and you know I'm well used to a bit of banter but it turned out though them three guys never seen a hurling match Never, never grew up in West Belfast, have never seen a live hurling match. And you get that a lot, Sambo, to be honest with you. And a lot of people are saying about the population in Belfast and stuff. But I reckon more than half of the people who I'm associated with wouldn't, have, wouldn't be interested in hurling at all. And that's completely different. If we travel an hour up the road to Cushendall, I can't go into Cushendall and not meet 10 people and talk, and talk about hurling with them. And I could walk up at, up the North Falls Road all day and maybe meet one person. Yeah, well, well, this is probably not the podcast for this, but I'm going to put it out there on it because the one thing like I'm not scared of giving my opinion. I I was on a panel or a committee in Crow Park, and I asked at that time, uh, uh, Collie Donny, who's your club man, can I go and blab and try and and see if Park Duffy was at the off to raise money for Belfast because I do believe Belfast is under achievement it's a sleeping giant and I think we're failing in this department and I went and asked him I says if I I went to Project Duffy he says if I come back what plan will you support it he says Sam will you come back what plan if it's a reasonable plan I will support it I give him my word on it I went get Sean McGuinness God rest the man Collie McFall who's also a club man of yours Ollie Bellew and um, Woody and me and that and we sat and we come up with a plan about breaking West Belfast into parochial areas for from under six to under ten or that there. So everybody in Turf Lodge are playing for Turf Lodge and they're going down and all the non GA families are going down to the Falls Park to watch we Johnny play with his wee mates from all the same street and you plant the seed in them and that there and then the clubs do that. We do the work and I've always said this and this is an argument why doesn't Ulster Council and Antrim and all the counties in Ulster get together, buy a big stately home down south, turn it into 200 dorms, uh, build three pitches down there and ship our development squads down there and have a bus company? Why doesn't Ulster Council just buy a bus company? Because Camogie, Hurling, Football, we're going up and down that road with hundreds of buses every weekend. Why doesn't Ulster Council buy a bus company and say, right, the development squads, we're not making... We're covering expenses just, we're not making profit and you're shipping them down to a stilly home where you've got maybe 
Antrim under 14s and Antrim under 16s down. You've got Anthony Daly or somebody coming in doing the coaching and you're playing Cork in the pitches, you're playing Tipperary the next day and that, then you're back home, you're down two weeks later and you're doing the same and out there and really expose your children to that higher level of competition so that it's not the skills don't like we have as good a coach as Nantum as anywhere mm. like you know how to teach a kid to pick a ball you know how to teach a kid mm. to strike a ball you know how to get faster or faster but the same way things that we do during a game that, that separates the thing it's the three guys stand behind Horgan mm. that loses the game mm. that you don't coach a guy that there that's that's game management that's experience that's getting exposed to that level and going down there and getting beat and getting beat and getting beat and you every day is baby steps you get closer and closer and closer 89 done that don't when i started i made my debut against kildare and uh division two really playoff because sean mcnaughton didn't go to mass yeah. you know he could drop because he didn't go to mass go yeah. figure but and that and then we could suppose we we ended up with belief that we could beat anybody. We believe, like, like we beat Cork and Case and Kilkenny and and then there, like, we weren't feared of them because we'd done it in the league and that there, like, people say, oh, great result in 89. We'd beaten Offaly twice that year already. And them didn't fear going to yeah, Cole Park to yeah. play Offaly. We'd beaten them twice already in the league. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, and that's what I want. And, and, and I think Colley then, made a decision because this other committee arrived out of nowhere that said, oh, we were working in Belfast Horton and we f and then I went to a few of the meetings, me and Sean McGuinness and Collie went to a few of the meetings and one night we spent an hour and a half talking about ladies Gaelic football and ladies in uh, Ormer Road that were burglars that we could uh, incorporate into the GA and not a word of it, the 2,000 wee boys in West Belfast that haven't held oil. Mm. And it was just a waste of time. And I understood why he'd done it. I'm not knocking him. I know it was inclusive. And I know that I'm a strong person now. That people are, oh, he's coming in here going to tell us what to do with Belfast. But I don't look at Belfast as Belfast. I look at others. Yeah. I want to see St. John's one. I want to see, like, I want to see St. John's of a minor team. You have them in a minor team seven, eight years. Yeah. Like, like, to me, that's when somebody from the top of needs to be squealing about that. Yeah. Like, we have played Rossa and I've played all these different teams this year and I don't see, I think the participation in Belfast at the minute is probably as bad as I've seen it in my lifetime and that worries me. And we can all, and you are doing a great job and Darren and Pappy and Johnny and all about doing a great job but there's another thing coming here if people don't see the, the danger signs here, we're in trouble here mm. because the population in the North Coast is getting smaller and smaller. The first time in my lifetime, we have had to join it on the 13s with Balamina. We're now Rory Oaks all since because our primary schools are getting smaller. Like the noise growing because the noise travelled in size basically because of the price of the houses. Mm. That's the only reason why anybody would live in Deloy. <laughs> you know, no. Wouldn't spot the end of Deloy for people. Nah, 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 I'm Glenn's man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no. it's so it's so fascinating, and I suppose that idea about having something like that in the south. I can only think about me. I don't. I can't think for other people, but I think something like that would genuinely help me so much as a kid. I mean, yeah. growing up through development squads. So when it gets to me playing against Cork and an all Ireland qualifier, um, the week after Joe McDonald, then I know I know what I'm going into. I know yeah. what I'm dealing with, and, and I have been exposed to that level, and that's a massive thing. And I think. I suppose coming from 89 and then um, going on into, it was just two years later in 91, um, you got word that you got your first Hurling All-Star. Um, how, how did that make you feel in terms of your whole journey through life? Um, I suppose after getting the All-Ireland final, the next big thing is probably winning an All-Ireland. But I mean, personally, for Sambo McNaughton, um, for that young child that I can just vision in my head now, uh, with his head against the table in school and all all that hardship and stuff, the walking up to get an all star with the cream of the crop of the country must have just been something else, was it? Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no point on playing it. It was a great achievement because I had been nominated, I think, twice before mm -hmm. that, and and it was it was an honour because it is a, a unique club like this. It is a yeah. skit in the green jacket. Like you become a club to be one of the best 
of that year. Like it's it's a nice award. But the people I got one with and the people I've got one before and after and that there, you're in that club with such and that there. And but I'm well aware there's people that that haven't got one or everybody as good as me, but but I honestly always believe there's people who got all our medals that aren't as good as me. Yeah. You know, and that's just life. It's, I didn't pick it. I didn't vote for it. I didn't. But but it is. It's nice as the years go on. It's nice to get and that there. And I'm proud of it. Like I'm mm. proud of what I've achieved in Ireland. Like, like make plenty of titles. I'm proud of them. And I'm proud of everything. Not everything I've done. There's days that like everybody. Like I, I, I definitely was no angel in that there. And there's things that I'm ashamed of or embarrassed about. But one of an all stars, not one of them, and it's, I'm proud of the fact, Don. But but saying that, like, it's not the be and all that. Like, 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 I can't run around and say, Oh, I'm an all star that there. But then I didn't want an all earned, mm. like, so one has to equal all right. Like, I'm I'm very happy with it. I'm happy with what I got out of life. I'm happy with what I've got out of hurting the good, the bad. Like, there weren't like we had probably as a team more bad days and good days. Mm. The truth be told, like you know, I've heard the speech. You know, you're doing a good job for holding up there, keep it going. More, more than I care to remember, like you know, and that there. And I would just love going for to go to Croke Park. I, you have no idea. I love. I think I would go down on a Wednesday. <laughs> I think I would buy three on them jerseys, so I, I would not have to. Change. I would wear my three on them jerseys, even them new tight fit ones. I don't care how stupid I would look at one. Them, what is it, team fit or match fit or what do they call them? Player fit. That's the word I'm looking. Them. I'm glad that that came in after I left. I'm not. Because, <laughs> no, no. Oh. My big biceps would look too bad in them. <laughs> but that's my big belly. <laughs> no, that's class. And it is. And, 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 and they go on. Um, and achieve the things you've achieved in the hurling pitch has just been class and I think mm. um, I, I do genuinely think that it should be talked about more um, especially with, with the way the life is now and society is now and the amount of difficulties people go through mentally and I suppose physically too um, so I think that is class that anything is possible with, with the wee bit of application and hard work um, but is sport not great for that don't it's amazing I, I totally agree with you and no. I think team sports as well, uh, I was talking to Mike Conlon, but I think team sports and having that togetherness where if you can do a job for the team and you're a part of this this friend group of 40 or 50 people or whatever it is, I think it's so, so important for communication. Um, you may even, even though you couldn't speak, but there's other forms of communication. You're running for a ball and people yeah. giving you a ball off the shoulder. Yeah. And then there's friendships. And then all of a sudden you're there for someone. You have someone's back. If something goes wrong in life, if you lose a friend, you know, and, and, and there all of a sudden you have your own wee community and but, wee family. Like yeah, but I couldn't agree with you 100% because, right, since you're young fella or a young couple growing up in Tumber mm. and you don't want your kids to get involved in any sorts of behaviour or blah, blah, or go down the road of drink, drugs, which, believe it or not, you know, it's the same throughout the whole country. Yeah. The village is up the coast. Everywhere is the same. But... What the GA offers you for free, what it teaches your kids, just think of the side of, forget about what on county titles are all starting at. There's a way more important stuff there and out there. Like, it teaches you about failure, it teaches you about success, how to deal with good people, bad people, mm -hmm. make the friends, like, 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 like I, I made this statement. Like your county friends will always be there for. They, they'll invite you to their weddings, their mm -hmm. parties, their stag do's, or whatever. But your club mates, they're the ones that are carrying you to your grave. Mm -hmm. Like St John's men will carry you down the White Rock Road on Sunday, mm -hmm. and that's it. And I hope you know guys will carry me up the Chapel Road. They'll be there. The guys that you maybe won an under twelve championship with, you know, like. Like the guy that if you need a thousand pound, don't put it in Twitter, they give it to you, say a word to nobody. Yeah. They're the real people you want in life. Like that's how you judge your quality of life. Like, you know, like you don't have to be Mr. You know, feed the starving children speeches I talk yeah. about. Like you have these people who stand, oh, we'll feed the starving children, knowing that nobody's going to disagree with that. Yeah. You want to be Mr. You know, that's what clubs about. That's what the game to like. I can't say if I was a young parent growing up in West Belfast or any city or South Belfast or whatever. Like, the GA is such a great avenue to get your kids involved health-wise, team-wise, dealing with people. It gives you every aspect of life and teaches you the skills that you're going to need 
in the real world when you go for a job and you don't get it, when the girl tells you to off, you know, mm-hmm. deals with all these things and it doesn't become a, a big success because there's nothing better than if you train three nights a week and four nights a week for three months to beat St. John's and then they get a goal in the day and it's and beat you like Rossa mm-hmm. last year. Like we had Rossa beat next thing these killers. Them kids will learn from that, mm. you know, and they learn from that. They learn about failure. And like, I can't understand how a young couple or a young family are not knocking the door down at St. John's. I want my kid to play Gilly games. I don't give a monkey's if he's the next Neil McMahon or the next Donald Nugent or he's the next Joe Blobs. Mm. He he needs friends. He needs, or she and him needs friends. They need to learn to play. They need to learn the skills. They need to make friends. And all the side effects that our our association give. Like we are the greatest sports amateur, we'll call it whatever you want in the world. Mm-hmm. It's something, but but it's the side effects, Donald. That I think, like like me and you could sit. We don't know each other. We suffer twenty minutes in the base school. We have one thing in common. That's all we have in common. Yeah. One thing. You and Christy have maybe more in common. <laughs> you can get into a car or a van, go down, spend the day at Crow Park and out there and then play each other next Sunday, not the shit each other. No big deal. That's the way it's supposed to be. And that's beautiful. Mm. That is beautiful. Like you you grew up like in West Belfast or whatever, went down a dark road for a while. Christy grew up in a, a beautiful, idyllic environment, blah, blah. You know, like the one thing that we've got in common is that three foot piece of ice you know it's special it is special and yeah. it does means and you can even hear from you how much it actually means to you mm-hmm. and you're so so passionate about it and i think it's class and i suppose everything uh, i was going to say outside of hurling but there's not much of your life that is it, it there's not much hurling like, hurling is a massive massive part of your life Do you want to hear do you want I'll, I'll get on to that maybe no, a bit of maybe Bruce, a... Bruce Springsteen but... this is a f- <laughs> record I've been wasted like, could have been somebody but you do own a, <laughs> you, do, you do own a pub and you do own guest rooms and stuff like that and you could do a gig in the pub you wouldn't have to pay anyone maybe yeah <laughs> how's, the, how's all that but going? I want to hold on to whatever few customers I have <laughs> how's that say the life going for you and how do you find it's it it's good like I built six bedrooms just to before actually the week before lockdown where they were finished like I probably couldn't have built six guest rooms at a worse time than as do man king but no I'm glad I did and they're going really well and it is what it is like the carbon says I've noticed this year that uh, I would walk mm. you know I, I walk a fur bit with my dog early in the morning late at night and not there and I walk through the carbon sites not there just on my route and uh, half the caravans are empty where are you as well fell fast people he's all the way to Spain or somewhere I don't, like, I don't know. I, I'm worried the like we're kind of lacking and all the chip eaters. Like, where are these all? Yeah, all the McCoys haven't come down. No. Do you like a bit of that whenever people from the city come up and they I love the bonder yeah. and that. Of course, business wise, yeah. it's better not there, not there. But don't. Uh, I, I probably never said this, but Belfast people are way better supporters of Antrim the North Island people. Mm. Like North Island people, ninety nine percent of them only care about their clubs, mm. and they don't do that there. Where in my experience growing up, like we had always would always create support from North Antrim. The buses used to leave North Antrim to follow us, but there was a massive amount of West Belfast people and that there were great Antrim people, like the guys in Casement at the minute. And Davids. Uh, Davids. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, that David crew yeah. seems to be everywhere. Like, <laughs> are they getting grants or something? <laughs> <laughs> so always giving them grants to follow Antrim. Like, no, I, never that, heard of it. Like, I think their social club's <laughs> doing all right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, no, that's class. Uh, I suppose to finish off, um, that was very, very fascinating. And all I can do now is sort of picture um, a young lad there who maybe is from the city or the country and maybe listening in, um, who doesn't believe in themselves. Um, would you have any advice for for anybody like that? Yeah, well, the advice I have, and I kind of always give this to every kid I was involved or coaching going up through, like, like it's not what happens in life, it's not important. It's how you what you do about it, what you deal with. It's like and there's different ways. It's it's not how many times you're knocked down, how many times you get up, all them quotes and that there. But the reality is life it's gonna be difficult at times. At diff- and it's gonna from times and out there, but but the downs can't be too low or the highs can't be too high. That middle ground and keep going again and the 
the big decisions in life, try and get them right. And like, uh, I never worry too much about anything. Like I say, I don't take myself too serious in that there, but, but I do, some going for a focus and thing. But the one thing I'll say about kids and that there, like, like, I was never supposed to be good at anything mm. or a mount anything. Like even from my education, I was never I was always gonna be in the dole or whatever. I was never gonna own my own pub or anything like that. That was if you had told my family when I was fourteen that he would own a pub and a business and a holy home in Portugal and that there and that's nothing to do like money means nothing to me. Well, it means something to me. Bank money's for somebody he keeps <laughs> on with that, but I'm trying to sort him out. But but I look in the mirror, Don, and 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 I'm I'm happy with the guy I turned out to be. Like I don't need to be like I'm not striving to be popular. I know I'm opinionated. I know a lot of people don't agree with that there, but like I could argue with you now over her and fall out with you. I've done many times, <laughs> and we can get up out of here and go for a coffee, and that wouldn't cause me a thought. Yeah. Like conflict doesn't worry me, or people not agreeing with me. That's life, but like I'd say to kids out there, like, like, just be a bit tougher. Just be a bit tougher. Just get up again and go again and say, listen, I didn't get the result. I didn't get the job. I didn't get the girl, whatever it is. There's another girl. There's another job. There's another game. Like, there's always another game. To... Park's coming to Corrigan again, though, mm. or somebody like him. And that's when you got to say, right, this is the day. Yeah. This is the day. We're not going to be Mr. Hospitality here. And that bugs me that we have to be this mess. You go to Cork and that there, and you're like, everybody wants you to keep the game going well on. You start beating them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I think like we need a wee bit of badness, a wee bit of devil in yeah. us. Yeah. We better say, hey, here, you know, us patting the back stuff has to stop. We're tramping over the top of here, and you're going to change in the fucking bus over there, and you're, you've won light and a change or whatever, and we're going to. Get into your face and make it really uncomfortable for you, and, and that's what you got to have that attitude in life. Because some days you'll fail, like the underdog usually fails, and that's why he's the underdog. But the odd day he gets it, like yeah, you no, know, odd day he gets there, like you know, there's a day you get to the top of the mountain, and there is a great view, and that memory, like the whistle goes in ninety day nine, we beat, we're going on iron final, then win a minutes, like everybody, like really, like, I remember when we won our first county title. I went in the room. Uh, I had to go to school the next day because I was only a kid. And these five old men were sitting. And I can name them. I can I can see their faces and their God, they're all dead and gone. Then it's Gore and John McCurry and Alec Delary and people, Arthur Delary and people like out there. And I remember them grabbing me by the knee and I just won my first county title, Pushing Doll's first ever county title. And I thought this was great, you know, and like half the people didn't even know I was playing because all the bandwagon out there. I remember standing beside John Delargy, who's an older fella, and me and him were standing in the corner, everybody came over shaking his hand and ignoring me. I just marked Peter Boyle, arguably the best forward in Antrim for two days. We drew a ball the first day, and he only got a point off me over two days. And he scored 11 points in the semi final. And I'm sitting thinking, why, why is nobody come shaking my hand? Like, but they didn't know I was playing because I was. A young fella, like, and them old men and John took me into the pub for a coke. The pub I actually own now, and I sat in at a coke, and they're crying. They're bawling their eyes out. I mean, the nonsense. And that's come back in a time where men didn't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I don't mean where men crying. Like, and these old men are bawling their eyes out, and one out grabbing me. And they, you're, you're that young son. You may get a couple of these. You make one another one. It meant that much to them, like, and and that's the. The seed that plants in the back of your head that you don't realise it makes you stronger, tougher than we things. And 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 that's all I want to say to young people. Just you know, don't be happy with a couple of them. Yeah, go get a rate more. It'll go get away more. Like the guy you see in the mirror, and no matter what happens in life, it's gone. Like I can't take the play back. Mm. It's always the next ball, don't. It's always the next action in life. It's always out there. If you don't get the job, you'll get an arm. If you don't get that one, you'll get an arm. Like, I read an article, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders, went around 976 restaurants before he sold one of his restaurants, before he sold one of his uh, recipes. You ever know the story of Kentucky Fried Chicken? <laughs> he was a retired colonel, and he, the only thing he had, he couldn't live on his pension. And 
and he he had a recipe for this chicken. And his idea was that he would sell it to the local restaurant and he would take a small percentage of what he sold to the chicken. Nine, 976 or something restaurants he went around and every one of them said no and one took it. And it built up and built up and the rest is history. The Kentucky Fried Chicken was born. Unbelievable. And that's a true story about Colonel Sanders. Unreal. Uh, every day is a school day. <laughs> it is. And I suppose, <laughs> and, and I actually, I, I thought that was amazing, uh, Sambo, and never changed. That's one thing I would say to you. Uh, I think you're so infectious, I'm nearly ready to go play against Cork now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you're, maybe you're different, Alex. Uh, yeah, but I think <laughs> you are, and you're a massive motivator, and um, and I'm so proud that you are a fellow county man, um, and I appreciate everything you do for the county, and I, and I know an awful lot mm-hmm. more people. Um, do as well but yeah this uh, podcast was sponsored by Craig Concrete um, a huge thanks to them and I know they're huge, also huge supporters of Antrim GA and the McKeag family um, um, are very passionate about giving back to our community but thanks very much Terence it was a pleasure was. cheers absolutely honoured thanks very much for asking me so, thank I you. hope somebody gets something out of it they will definitely